Today we delve deep into AMT's 1962 Chevy 3-in-1 station wagon. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. You scour around YouTube looking for any information on these model kits. You find countless build videos, but nobody even wants to show you what's in the instruction sheet. But then, you found the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel. We feature classic plastic, imports, new releases, domestic kits, television and movie cars, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The 1963 Chevy 2 Station Wagon Model Kit by AMT is a customizing kit, a 3-in-1, that you can build stock, custom, or advanced custom. Here we see the Progressive Racing Team version with the custom front end, the advanced custom front end, the siren on the top, as well as this trailer which is included in the kit, and all these wonderful accessories. Build a custom racing team includes trailer, toolbox, helmet, and parachute. This is a stock engine under here with fuel injection. This model kit comes with an amazing collection of stock parts, custom parts, five optional engine builds, display stand, trailer, plus much more. So looking here, we have the one piece body, a detailed chassis, the detailed interior parts, custom and stock wheels, white wall tires, seat belts, a helmet, custom steering wheel. If I move the box along, We have the gas and oil cans, the headrests, the drag chute, toolbox, chrome accessories, skirts for the fenders, there's the trailer, the hood scoop, the roof rack, the 58 Chevy taillights for the custom version, car phone, tape recorder, stock grill, a 56 DeSoto grill, and then here we have all the different engine options. So we have the stock six cylinder with a fuel injection add-on, and then you can build that V8 motor any way you like, top mounted blower, front mounted blower, eight carb setup, and fuel injected. On this side of the box, we see the drag racing engine with display stand, an Honest Charlie approved sticker. Honest Charlie was one of the custom parts creators and dealers back in the early days. Here we also see the advanced custom version of the car, right there, with that custom nose on it, as well as the features in the kit, which include the full-on decal sheet. Here we have the instruction sheet for our 63 Chevy 2 Nova 400 wagon, the 3-in-1 customizing kit, and I always like to show the instructions here, just in case you're wondering how the kit goes together. This is the best way to show a step-by-step. -step. Here we have the stock version of the car. We also have the crew car and the advanced custom right down here, as well as a shot of the detailed engine. We start the model off with the basic assemblies, and in step one we have the engine. This is our Chevy Straight 6, which is built up with a right and left hand side engine block, which has the oil pan molded on, as well as the transmission. Up in the front we have our fan, fan belts and pulleys, as well as our alternator which would all glue together and then glue onto the front timing chain cover. Up top we have our choice of the stock valve cover or the custom valve cover. It looks like the carburetor is molded on the side of the air cleaner. So you would put your air cleaner on here and then add in your intake manifold and your exhaust manifold with the exhaust pipe down below. But if you want the fuel injection version, here is the injectors right here and you would use your custom valve cover up top. Our next step is the interior assembly, which you can build either stock or custom. So first off, we have the interior bucket, which also includes the front seat molded in place. You do have to add in the stock rear seats, but you also get the stock instrument panel as well as the stock steering wheel. And then for the custom and advanced custom, you can add in your seat belts, the custom console with the floor shift lever, these custom 
headrests with the headrest cushions that you glue in place. We also have the custom steering column as well as the custom wheel and then your choice of adding in the tape recorder, the fire extinguisher, the stuffed animal, the phone which is a two-piece. You've got the receiver up top and the telephone down below, a drag parachute, the helmet and the face mask for the helmet, as well as these rear speakers and the custom console which you can glue in here which has all the gauges. Step 3 shows our wheel assembly as well as our chassis and engine mounting assembly. What we have here is the engine from step 1 which is now complete and we would glue into the chassis. We also have these lowering blocks which get glued up in here and then right behind them is the front axle pins which will go into the wheel back. Here we have the tires and this is the stock wheel and hubcap. But over here we also have the custom wheel with these knockoff spinners. Step 4 is our body assembly and here we have the body itself as well as the hood, the side mirrors, the rear view mirror, our windshield and side and rear glass assembly, and then our completed interior which you glue up into all of this. Then under the hood we have the battery installation, the radiator and the master cylinder. If you intend on building your model as a factory stock station wagon, then here are the steps to follow. First, get your front grille and bumper and attach it to the front of the car. Then turn the car around and put on your stock rear bumper. Also add in the rear taillight bezels and the lenses and just push them into the back of the car. Then bring your chassis up and attach it up underneath and your car will be all together. Over here we have a location diagram and this is showing the location of the master cylinder, the radiator and water hoses up here, as well as the battery and the radiator itself. If you intend to build the custom crew car, there's a lot of other great goodies on here. So we have the roof carrier with the extensions up front, which are chrome. We have a roof antenna and the two-piece siren. Then we have spotlights, sunken aerials you can add in, as well as these great mirrors up front, fender and rear skirts. We also have this exhaust pipe on the side, and then a vertical grill here, which attaches to your stock grill. Out back, we have these cool turn signals up here, as well as the knockoff gas cap and the bullet taillights. And we also have the rolled pan down here, license shroud and the license plate itself. If you plan on building the advanced custom version of this kit, here AMT has included general instructions for filling, sanding, and painting, as well as all these custom advanced pieces that you can use. It's your choice really how you want to build this model. Here we have rear fender skirts, we also have side pipes, we have the spotlights, the mirrors, the sunken aerials, the hood scoop, the front nose clip, the optional Lucas bezels with the clear lenses. There's also these chrome headlight covers if you want to put those on and just delete the Lucas lights. We have the 56 DeSoto mesh grill going in here. We have parking lights. We have a license plate with a license plate front shroud. Then going to the back of the car, here we have the custom upper roll pan and the lower roll pan, as well as the 58 Chevy taillights with these two bullets glue in, red transparent bullets. There's also the long taillight bezel if you want that, with the custom taillights. We also have a license plate and a license plate shroud. And then down here we have a brake drum and a jack stand. And in order to put these on you would remove one of the wheels somewhere and use the brake drum and then put the stand up underneath. There's also a grill divider in here if you want this to have a more Pontiac type of look. Next we get into the accessories which make this model kit really cool. Here we begin with the trailer and the accessories. So we have the oil can and the gas can and these are the tops and you glue on the bottoms. Then we have a two-piece toolbox with the lid and the box bottom, the torque wrench, and now we get into our trailer with a lot of options on here. We have the front panel and the side panels which glue onto the trailer floor. There's also the tailgate and these custom taillight lenses back here. And there's also these two red R7 wide bullet taillights. 
that you could also add onto your trailer. The license plate, the fenders. Then here we have the outer wheel, the white wall tire, the inner wheel. And then we have the axle with the springs, which is a two piece affair with a metal axle going through. And at the front of the trailer, we have the hitch base, which you would glue onto the car, I do believe, the hitch pin, and then this hitch cap here. The hitch pin should click into the front of the floor on this little C hook. Our final accessory in this kit is the drag racing engine, which you can build as one of five different variations. First off, you will need your transmission, which is a right and left hand side component, and the shift lever going up in the top. Then down here, you build your GMC 671 supercharger, which is your blower. You got your right and left hand sides, as well as the back plate and the front cover. Then here, we're building a Chrysler Hemi motor from the past, like a DeSoto Fire Dome. And what you have is your rocker arm covers, your cylinder heads, the two-piece engine block, your exhaust manifolds, and an oil pan and the front cover plate. And then you glue your transmission on the back. Getting into the engine variations, first off, we have a fuel injection top-mounted blower with the upper and lower blower pieces. Your injectors being glued on top of the blower. And then you have your blower drive plate here, as well as your blower belt and pulleys, a magneto and the magneto cap, and your intake manifold, all those glued down onto your engine. Next, we have an eight carb blow inversion. So here you have your carburetors going up top onto this plate manifold. You have your blower drive plate here, your blower belt drives, your intake manifold, the magneto cap and the magneto, and that all glues on the top of the engine. Then you have your in fuel injection unblown version. So here we have the injector ram tubes, which get glued onto this valley cover here. You've got your magneto, your fuel pump, your drive belts, and then you glue on your water tank with this going over top of the belts. Down here we have the fuel injection crank driven blower. So now you take your blower assembly and you rotate it so it's up and down. And here we have the pressure relief valves being glued in place. And then these hoses going up to the intake manifolds. And then you glue your magneto onto that valley galley cover and glue that down onto your engine. And finally, we have an eight carb regular street version. So there's your carburetors. And then you have a log manifold. You have a magneto being glued on there. There's your galley cover again, the fuel pump, the water tank and the drive belts with the drive belts going on first and the water tank second. Finally, you have your choice of displaying this engine on the engine stand. And just looking at this, I kind of wonder if this engine would also fit into some of the old AMT trophy series like the 1940 Ford or the 36 Ford pickup truck. One thing that I've noticed recently about AMT kits that are new releases is that they are using a lot of these custom components and whatnot from early, early AMT releases from like 1961, like the 61 Buick Special. For example, here is a trailer that came with the 1961 Buick, as well as the great big Chrysler engine with the five exact same building variations. Here we have the body for our 1963 Chevy 2 Nova 400 wagon. This thing is quite amazing, and I don't know if this is an original body from the 60s, but one thing that has been either added or improved upon is the inner fender aprons right here. You get the top of the shock towers as well as the water bottle, place to mount your battery. Looking up at the front, you actually get these wonderfully detailed horns right there on the radiator support wall. Up underneath, there are mounting holes for screws for screwing the chassis into the body, as well as an area back here to clip that all in. And then there's a registration mark up underneath on the inside of the roof. There are a couple little holes, but that might be for mounting the siren. There are a few tall mold marks in here, which you can deal with with your number 16 hobby knife. The detailing up here is quite nice with the chrome along the sides, as well as our gas door and the logos. We have the door handles, which look like accurate GM ones. We have our windshield wipers and the grill right there. 
And then on the back on our tailgate, we have the Chevy logo down here as well as the handle. And again, a lot of chrome surface areas and the little hinges down there too. Again, a really excellent little body from AMT. Here we have the interior for the Chevy 2 Nova 400 wagon. And what you see here is the front bench seat molded right in place, which is kind of interesting because the back seat is a separate seat. So I wonder if that would be that you could put a piece of plastic across here and here into the back of the seat just to extend the load area of the wagon. Again, uh, the side details are quite smooth. It's not a bad molding considering the seats in the way. You do have some sort of resemblance of armrest in here as well as window cranks and the panel down below. Again, the floor is quite nice because it's an automatic, so you have your gas pedal and your brake as well as the transmission hump there. There are some mold marks up into the front, which you'll have to get rid of with that number 16 hobby blade, as well as one in the back. And this looks like a little spare tire cover back here, which is quite nice. And here you've got your wheel well arches. And turning it over, there's not really any mold marks going on here, but there are some points that you might need to file off just in order to make this all look nice and pretty. This parts tree includes our chassis, as well as the stock steering wheel, the rear seat, the hood, the dashboard and instrument panel, our wheel backs, and the animal, as well as the little lowering blocks and our front axle pins. So taking a look at this up into the camera, the rear axle is molded in as a one piece, as well as the exhaust pipe and our fuel tank and the spare tire on the bottom there and uh, the front A-arms as well as the mounting points for your engine are all included. There's your steering wheel with the horn ring and then look at the squirrel, it's kind of cool. Squirrel! <laughs> Where's Danny the dog when you need him? And chase that thing right away. Okay, the rear seat looks very much like the front seat and then let's turn this over. There's our wheel backs. These are the small ones for the 13 inch type wheels or 14 inch, something like that. Underneath you have your hood with the fireproof mat. Unfortunately, again, we have mold marks and there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you'd have to take care of that with that number 16 hobby blade. The chassis looks quite nice from this side. It goes down into a well, which is really, really cool. Again, though, all these parts are excellently molded by AMT. Our next parts tree features the stock engine as well as the customizing pieces for the advanced custom. So here's our engine block right and left hand side with the transmission. Our hood scoop, mine seems to be missing a little bit of that tail on here or the, or the lead in, whatever you want to call that. Here we have the roof rack, we also have our fender skirts for the back, center console, the roll pan our helmet with the front face mask for drag racing. And then there's our fan, our seat belts, custom steering column, the belts and pulleys, the stock air cleaner, the stock valve cover with the carburetor, then our intake manifold, exhaust manifold, the battery, the center brace that goes into the front custom clip, headrests, radiator, and again more of the rolled pans and the license plate shrouds and all the rest. So there's our front grille. It does have two little holes for that center divider which would also be covered over with that DeSoto grille. Turning it over to the back there are some mold marks all up in here as well as a little bit of discoloration on mine. That again could be some mold release agent. Overall though you should be able to scrape this all down and make it look quite nice. So just out of curiosity, I wonder how this front clip goes onto the body. <laughs> I don't know if I can show this too well. It does look like it would plug in quite nicely and fit pretty flush with the body with minimal putty work. So again, a nice little parts tree by AMT. Here we have the parts tree for our trailer. What we have is our trailer floor. We've got our fenders, we've got the tailgate, and then we have the right and left hand sides as well as the front panel. Here's our rear axle with the springs and the top of the rear axle. We also have our two-piece toolbox, the trailer hitch, and the hitch goes onto the car as well as the hitch cover. 
Again, really wonderful work by AMT. It has a wooden floor simulated texture in here. And up underneath, you can see all the framing. Look at all the mold marks. <laughs> Holy smokes. This is the mold mark trailer supreme for sure. You will have to fill those in and sand them off just to make this all look nice and flat and flush and good. Don't really want all these sink marks in here everywhere. So I will uh, give it a negative mark underneath here. But if this is the original trailer from the 61 Buick, I mean, it's always nice to have it. And it will look good on the back of your car once you fix all those holes. Here we have two parts trees, and these are showing the accessory engine right here, as well as our oil and gas cans with the tops here and the bottoms here. And then we've got our wheel backs for our trailer. Here's our Chrysler engine. We have our right and left hand side engine block. There's our little transmission down here, which glues on there. As you can see, it is quite tiny. We also have our belt drives and pulleys. And then we've got our cylinder heads, the intake manifold, and then our fuel injection manifold and the galley cover. We also have the fuel log here and our stand. Now, remember I was saying I wondered if the stand would fit the AMT Trophy Series engines? Well, this is the one I built in that video a long time ago, which you can see up here, for the 1940 uh, Ford Custom Engine. This, of course, is the Buick Nailhead from 1961. And it actually will fit pretty much perfectly right on the engine stand. So because it fits so nicely on the engine stand, that would mean that this engine stand is the same universal one in those old Trophy Series kits, which means that this engine should fit into the AMT 40 Ford or some of those other kits, maybe even the 32 Ford series. So if you actually tried this in the past, let us know in the comment section down below. Now let's bring these parts up into the camera to take a look at the detail on them. So again, we have the nice engine with the frost plugs molded in on the sides here. All that little detail. It's a, a little bit soft, I would still say, but uh, overall it is nice to have this in our collection. Up underneath, you can see all the mold marks again, so get rid of them with that number 16 hobby blade. Now looking at the fuel cans, the tops are really nice on this, looks like the real thing. There's the handle, which is flopped down to the side, as well as the filling spout and the air breather. And then the wheel backs here again look very typical to the standard wheel backs. So overall again, really nice parts and these look good sitting on that display stand. AMT has given us five complete chrome parts trees to this kit and I'm pretty sure a lot of these parts in here will end up in other builds that you're doing in the future. Our first chrome parts tree includes the grill, the headlights, and the bumper. And if you want to know how to apply a black wash into the grill to make it look more realistic, check out this video scrolling across here. So this black banner, take your mouse and click on it. It'll open up a little subcategory of all the videos here that I've been referencing. And you just find the one with the black wash and you click there and it'll take you right to that video. Here we have our stock hubcaps as well and the mirrors and the side mirror and these little taillight bezels. Bringing this up into the camera you can see the wonderful detail of that grill. Looks just like a Chevy too, doesn't it? The little hubcaps will be nice to paint up and look professional. Now here we also have the hooks so that's for mounting that front end together and the pan here for the rear bumper which would slot in and glue up underneath on the interior. Again, really nicely done. There are some mold marks I have to take care of. I'd like to paint these black in the back so that you don't see this big chrome thing when you open up the hood, which is not really realistic. Overall, again, really nicely done. Our next chrome parts tree includes a lot of the customizing goodies in this kit, like the 56 DeSoto grill insert, the parking lights, the Lucas lights, the chrome light covers, the club plaque, the exhaust pipes that go outside of the body, we have our chrome knockoff for the gas cap, the valve cover, the injectors for the engine. We also have our stock alternator here. We have the siren. We have a bunch of the aerials and antennas and backup lights for the roof, fire extinguisher, and the gauge cluster. We've got our chrome drum brake here. We also have our steering wheel and the custom wheel 
bolts. So let's take a look at this. Look at those nice wires on there. There are some knockoffs in here somewhere. There's the, the 58 Chevy backup lights. There's the knockoffs there. Again, really nice detail work on here. Not too bad on the mold marks for this chrome part tree. Overall, again, really excellent. Look at that DeSoto grill in there. Excellent work, AMT. Keep it up, keep up the good work. Carrying on with custom goodies, we have the custom mirrors. We also have the dummy spotlights and a lot of the grill work on here, as well as the backup lights for the version number two. And then we also have this little grill insert. And we have our jack stand here, as well as the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. My dad had a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and he recorded this story about firemen and a burning building and the fire trucks rushing out and all this stuff. And nobody knows what actually happened to that afterwards. So that's really weird. I'd like to find that again. Anyway, there's our grill. And with the black wash in there, again, it would look really, really nice. This would go on the front of the grill. And there's the little ends for the, uh, the roof racks up top. Off the back, we have some mold marks, which again could be scraped off with that number 16 hobby blade. Look at the back of the mirrors, again, really nice. And our chrome jack stand for the uh, beauty of it. It's not really a jack stand, what did they call that? No, yeah, it's a jack stand. Anyway, again, really excellent chrome work by AMT. Here we have the chrome parts tree for our Chrysler Firepower engine. And again, this is really nice that I can actually read them on the valve covers and figure it out. You have the wonderful holes in here for the spark plugs, which are really cool. And there's your blower there, as well as the front covers for the blower, the hood scoop, and the timing chain cover, as well as all our carburetors. They look really nice here. Uh, quite different from the illustration. We've got our oil pan, the valley covers again. Really cool stuff, bring this up to the camera. You can just see how wonderful the detailing is on that. Look at those covers. Again, a look at the, uh, the finning into the front cover. There's our intakes for the fuel injectors, as well as our exhaust manifolds. Really cool work again. Excellent stuff from AMT from the past. And if this is actually from the 61 Buick kit, the molds have really held up well. Our final parts tree has the outer wheels for the trailer, as well as the drag chute and the shift lever. And it's not too big of a parts tree, but again, it does look quite nice. Now, these chutes were sort of like an aluminum fireproof fabric. So with the black wash again, you can tone down the chrome look of this because it doesn't look quite right and end up with sort of like a aluminum fabric type of look almost like um space suits you know kind of thing or the fireproof suits that the driver would wear in a drag race again really nice work and should look good on your kit here we have the transparent clear components for our glass as well as the custom headlights as well as the transparent red plastic and look at this batman here we have the phone molded in transparent red if you had a little grain of wheat light bulb underneath, you could actually have this light up like the Batman phone from the 1966 TV Batman series. So again, really cool stuff. So we have that telephone, we have the stock tail lights. We also have the custom long tail lights and the four bullets, as well as the dome for the siren. And then there we have our front windshield and the side windows as well as the glass in the back. And our front headlights for the Custom as well as for the Lucas as well. Actually those would be for the stock. And they do have that texture on them so make sure it goes north and south, east and west and not at a funny angle. Let's bring this up to the camera. Take a look at the Commissioner Gordon phone right there. Again, really cool stuff. There we go. Get into focus. Again, awesome, awesome work. The taillights are really tiny, so be careful when you clip them out that you don't lose them somewhere. It has happened in the past. <laughs> There's our headlights, again with that texture up in there, and the clear glass for the windshield. There are mold marks in the corners of the windshield and the glass, but hopefully that'll get covered over with the body. But overall, again, really excellent stuff from AMT.
Next up, AMT has included this nice little strip of tires. They're all the same size, and you do get the white wall on one side, and if I turn them over, black wall on the other. So I'll just open this one up. It was kind of convenient to show them that way. So we'll just get a tire out here and bring it up to the camera. Now these are quite nice. You actually have that really wonderful sidewall detail in here going out there. There is a nice tread in here. It's just a simple one that wraps around. There aren't any uh, lettering for like if this is Goodyear or Firestone or All Trade or whatever. But uh, overall it looks quite nice. Again, wonderful little tires from AMT and should give the right ride height to your model car. Before we get into looking at the actual decal sheet, one thing that's really nice is the inclusion of the instructions for showing where these decals go. Here we have the crew car, and again we've got the progressive racing team decal along the side. These footprints going up over the hood, that's kind of interesting. Here we have the service version with the different uh, ambulance and numbers on there. Patrol car. And then we have the custom decals here showing all these different scallops and whatever else is going on. And then here we have the instructions for actually using water slide decals, which is basically get the decals wet, wait till they coil up, and then wait till they go flat again, and then they're ready to release off the paper. Put them on your model where you want, and then slide the backing paper off and dab with a towel just to get them all to fit down nice. And then you can use something like Solvacet to lock them in place. Here's our decal sheet with Progressive Racing Team, and you get your choice of having the red dragster here, the rail dragster, or the blue one along the side. There are actually two Progressive Racing Team decals, so you could use this on another station wagon model kit if you wanted to, just to sort of have a team going on. Here we have the Turnpike Patrol decals with number 102. You can see patrol all over here. We also have the ambulance side markings as well, and that would be the door panel for the patrol car. And then we have this really cool decal here for an upholstery shop. We also have the feet for going over the hood and the Earhart racing decal and bell helmets for sponsors. Mr. Horsepower himself here, the California customs decal again for maybe on the back. Then here you've got all those nice scallops going on. We also have a Michigan license plate, California plate, Florida, and this one here is Illinois. There's the Honest Charlie decal, as well as the different gauges you can put on, and just a regular stock showroom style 1963 plate. There's also the Nova um, logos on there, if you don't want to paint them as well as that for on the hood and then the little swinger if you want to turn this into the drag car as well as the drag racing numbers here off the side. Well I hope you enjoyed watching that video of me unboxing the AMT 1963 Chevy 2 station wagon customizing kit which you can find now at www.monster-hobbies.ca for a limited time only. And if you really enjoy watching these great videos, don't forget to subscribe to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Well, you may be asking, what does it mean to subscribe? Does it cost any money? No, no, not at all. Because this is YouTube and a YouTube subscription means that you really dig this channel and you want to support us. Also, if you click that little notification bell, which is down below, actually right beside the subscribe button, what that does, it allows you to be notified via email and via YouTube that I've made a new video that you want to check out because you really enjoy watching these model car videos, hopefully anyway. So if that sounds really cool to you, click that subscribe button and also click that thumbs up like button, which helps the YouTube algorithm to let more people know that this is a really cool video that everybody likes and that spreads it all around YouTube so I get more views. So until next time, everybody, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for your support and we'll see you in the next one.